Hi everyone, uh, this is an overview of the UIT Autonomous Ship Program. Uh, my name is uh, Loku Kaluge Prasad Pereira. I'm an associate professor from University of Tromsø. Uh, so the recent activities we have taken under this uh, Autonomous Ship Program at UIT will be uh, presented in this uh, presentation. let's move on. Um, so this is the outline of my presentation. First, I will give you a brief uh, introduction of my presentation, then followed by a ship intelligence framework. This is where we're going to discuss the building blocks of this uh, autonomous shipping, at least in, in our view. And then uh, we already have uh, uh, systems uh, with the vessel being developed. So I will talk about vessel sensors and systems under that topic. Then to support that autonomous uh, vessel navigation, we have a remote uh, operational center. Uh, safety is an important part of autonomous navigation in, in the maritime domain. So we will talk about a little bit on situation awareness also under this presentation. And then finally, the conclusions uh, uh, will be presented. So let's talk a little bit about these uh, challenges in the autonomous navigation. Um, in general, autonomous navigation will play an important role in the future transport systems. Um, if you say something about the autonomous navigation, this concept pretty much came from the uh, self-driving car or the automotive industry. Uh, this is where the examples of uh, systems driving itself uh, have been uh, presented. So I think that was the lessons we learned uh, from that industry and we are trying to uh, bring that back, bring that into the maritime industry under these type of uh, projects. Um, so, but we can conclude that technology is required for autonomous navigation in land transportation, land transportation system is somewhat in a matured phase. Uh, there are self-driving cars already in the streets. So one reason for that is the environment is structured. That means there's a well-defined roads and communication networks been there. Um, but uh, we believe that uh, autonomous transport, autonomous navigation in an unstructured environment is somewhat challenging due to various navigation constraints. Uh, for example, maritime industry is covered by this type of uh, unstructured environment where the, where, where the, the ocean is uh, there. But uh, compared to the land transportation, there's no visible uh, road systems being uh, established uh, in, in the ocean. So that we see as a challenge. Um, so as a conclusion, we can say not only the required technologies for the maritime transportation can be more complex, but those are still under a development phase. And the present infrastructure is inadequate uh, to execute a maritime transportation system. So I would I would highlight one point in this point in the in this uh, in this uh, uh, time. Um, since the land transportation systems has a, a structured environment, uh, the autonomous navigation was somewhat a success. So when you talk about maritime transportation, since this is not a structured environment, but we are trying to structure the environment through, uh, uh, I would say, artificial or, or simulated, uh, uh, simulated structures, I think we believe that is the way to proceed towards autonomous navigation in, in, in shipping. So in a way, since we have road transportation, road structure for land transportation systems, we propose to develop something called digital routes into the uh, maritime transportation system. So it's, it's a similar way that um, road structure type of, uh, type of infrastructure can be established in the ocean. So the vessels can navigate using this type of a, uh, a digital route. Of course, these are something artificially we are created in, in, in the ocean. Um, so, so due to these uh, issues, this infrastructure and the technology challenges, um, there are the technological challenges can can uh, introduce uh, various issues into the maritime transportation systems in relations to the autonomous navigation. 
Um, so we believe the required fundamental technologies to support so future maritime transportation systems and autonomous navigation should be done. And the first step would be to understand the challenges that are associated with uh, ship navigation and finding solutions can be an initial step towards that type of a, uh, uh, that type of a technology development. So let me say a little bit about this uh, ship controllability problem because this is, I would think, the less understood problem. And uh, however, that can introduce additional challenges into uh, uh, ship navigation situations with compared to a uh, road transportation system. Uh, in this figure, I am showing a vessel in a, in a 2D uh, space. I am showing a vessel is doing some type of a maneuver. So the P uh, point is represented by the vessel position and often we call this is also as a, the center of vessel rotation. And uh, there's a something called core speed vector. So this is that is represented by VT in this uh, figure. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is the way this whole rigid body as a vessel is moving. And then there's a, a couple of additional vectors you should know, which is the heading or search vector, which is represented by UT. And then sway velocity vector, which is represented by VT. Um, often this heading and the core speed vectors can be in the same direction. So then it's a, it's a more simplified uh, ship maneuvering problem. So the vessels can navigate in a straight line, at least in the assumptions. But uh, some situations, these two vectors will have a two different directions. So there's an angle between these two vectors we call drift angle. Um, so let's go back to a little bit of fundamentals. Uh, ship maneuvering consists of a complex rigid body motion. When you think vessel as a one single rigid body and the bandwidth of nonlinear hydrodynamics and wind forces and movements and their interactions uh, can create often unexpected and undesirable uh, ship, ship motion. And for example, in this case, it's showing uh, two different directions for the core speed and the heading vectors. Um, so I have mentioned that uh, the core speed vector can deviate from the heading vector and introduce drift angle. Um, I also mentioned about these digital routes. Um, that, that means to building up some sort of road structure in the ocean. So since in, in general we don't have such type of a, a navig navigation routes in the ocean, vessels navigate in a way that you can see multiple vessels in the vicinity of the same vessels having various core speed and heading vectors. So that is that, that type of scenarios can make a really complex navigational conditions and introduce various constraints of on the vessels to uh, make its maneuvers. Um, so, so such type of uh, uh, multiple vessels having various core speed vectors can introduce uh, additional collision risk into this vent vessel line counter situation, which, which is that is something we should mitigate when you're talking about uh, autonomous ship navigation. Um, so there are additional challenges. Um, vessels are considered as unactuated system. So that means the fully controllability of the vessel from radar and propel actuation is not possible. Um, especially this is demanding under rough weather conditions. Uh, so this unactuation is also coming under this when your maneuvering interactions. So that will make sure uh, that will make these vessels to, to maneuver itself is somewhat extremely difficult under uh, external forces and movements. And these vessels having a really heavy inertia uh, with compared to, a, 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 let's say, a, a smaller the rigid bodies. So that inertia will make itself uh, difficult for these bodies to move. There's another challenge, this core speed vector, which is the one we generally want to control, to control the whole rigid body motion, is, is, is somewhat difficult to measure or estimate through with, with, with a reasonable accuracy uh, from the sensor measurements. Um, and then this uh, vessel position, or we call this center of vessel rotation, 
can change along its center line due to these external forces and movements. So, of course, these move, external forces and movements come through various uh, due to environmental loads. Um, so we try to solve a, a difficult problem under this uh, vessel controllability. The reason is uh, this core speed vector will also change and it's difficult to measure. And then the position of the core speed vector will also change uh, in, a, in a somewhat complex ship maneuvering situation. Other than that, uh, vessels are considered as a sole slow responsive systems due to this even initia, and uh, it may not respond to uh, control faster control inputs uh, as required by some of these uh, control systems. And then you have to remember most of the control systems we developed in a continuous domain, and then we convert into the uh, discrete domain uh, under this discrete control request. And uh, in some situations, we never know how, how robust or how uh, stable these controllers when you are converting from a continuous time to a discrete time. At least we have not uh, proven in, in the majority of the situations. So uh, there are quite a lot of algorithms based on various advanced controllers has been proposed under classical mechanics to solve this problem of ship controllability, but the outcome, uh, outcomes are still not satisfactory. Um, so we consider this ship, ship controllability problem still as an as open-ended problem because due to those uh, challenges that I have discussed previously. Um, so these challenges, obviously coming from the mathematical models. Those models not adequately capture the complexity in ship motions. Uh, so, so for the same reasons, the, the, the controller robustness and stability cannot be preserved during uh, these ship maneuvers, especially when you try to control these vessels. Um, and then I think the, the control input itself will have some challenges when you're talking about rudder and propeller control inputs. Um, these are uh, not continuous, as I have mentioned about these continuous controllers. Um, and then uh, also I mentioned that the heading and the core speed vectors uh, in two different directions and may not have a high accuracy. And, and due to these challenges, there can be time delay also will get associated with these controllers. So overall, uh, most of the controllers we have developed in a theoretical domain uh, may, get, may get degraded due to uh, these uh, reasons. Of course, there are ship autopilot systems are has been developed um, based on similar approaches, but but these systems have some 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 limitations under uh, various complex navigational uh, constraints. So due to all these reasons that I have mentioned. Um, the, the vessels are still navigated by humans and uh, they use their knowledge and experience to overcome uh, the complex problems that I have discussed. So um, our aim is to develop or use AI to solve this ship, ship controllability problem. So since the, the best controller known to humans is the humanity itself. So we use this human behavior to solve this ship controllability problem under this project. So this is what we call this cloning ship navigator behavior in the bridge. So I will get into a little bit more details on, on that uh, issue. So uh, since the initial idea of a self driving vehicles or the autonomous vehicles came from the autonomous industry, automo automate, automotive industry under self-driving cars. So let's look some of the solutions being implemented under that industry. So uh, one lesson we learned from that, learn from that uh, industry and bringing into the maritime would be to capture or the mimic navigator knowledge and experience. This is the uh, knowledge and experience from the driver has been implemented under something called deep learning or deep neural networks as a groundbreaking technology by the car industry. So we think that is also better solutions uh, for the maritime industries to control these uh, vessels. 
Um, so to so to succeed in that, you need uh, quite a lot of sensors on board these vessels, and then uh, you need data fusion algorithms uh, under such type of a framework. So uh, the self-driving cars, the driver is successfully replaced by these deep neural networks, and this is kind of mimic human behavior uh, due to three main factors. The first factor was collecting uh, and analyzing large scale real world driving data sets. So often this is going to be images and then the driver's actions uh, you use to train uh, something called deep neural networks under this uh, AI. And then the second point would be this holistic understanding of how human driver interact with the vehicle uh, technology. This is especially focused on the autom automation technology. Uh, so that's also something we believe uh, an, an important part for the shipping industry. Then the third point would be adequate safety buffer. The safety is an important part of any navigation system. So having a proper collision avoidance uh, systems can be uh, a, an important part of uh, autonomous vessels also. So we believe this uh, training phase, this is where we somewhat have a good understanding on the holistic understanding of how the human driver interact with the technology and then the execution phase this is where you have quite a good uh, safety buffer into these uh, autonomous navigation systems so if i move on further uh, we have uh, four uh, key pillars in our program the first one is the human helmsman so this is the navigator human navigator and then the ai or we call digital helmsman. This is kind of cloned human behavior. And then the technology, uh, navigation and automation systems, and then the regulations, navigation rules and regulations. So these, these four key pillars have its own uh, interactions in this uh, project. So we start with the human uh, navigator. This is where we're going to collect large amount of ship navigation data set. So after that, we use these data sets to uh, train these deep neural networks. Um, so at some point, that process would be uh, uh, human training the AI. So this is AI learning from humans experience, and this would be considered as this uh, behavior cloning. And uh, when we have a, a fully autonomous vessels, we believe still the, the vessels navigated by humans will be in the ocean. So there will be a human and AI interaction at some point. So this is some one, one of the research area should be investigated in the future. So when you come to the technology, um, we already know quite a lot of things about human technology interactions. And, and, and one of the uh, important part of that interaction would be information visualization. You get information from this technology and visualize towards humans. And then we have a good idea about how human understand that information in, in, in ship navigation. But then uh, there's another section we still has to uh, study. This is this AI and technology interaction. When you develop this cloned human behavior, how that will interact with the technology yet to be investigated. And then the same time, we would like to know the uh, how we should visualize this information in a way this uh, AI will understand that information. This is something we called uh, when you when you're having a deep neural networks. There's a there's a way we should present information into these deep neural networks that the networks can preserve the most important information coming out of these systems uh, by itself. So presenting uh, the information or the visualization of this information to AI will play an important role when you're talking about autonomous navigation. And finally, the navigation rules and regulations. This is somewhat related to the collision avoidance also. Um, so we know the regulatory compliance of humans, but then how this regulatory compliance would implement with respect to the AI uh, yet to be uh, investigated. So uh, deep neural networks, let's talk about a little bit on that. Uh, this is a considerable deviation from the conventional control approaches in ship navigation. Um, so instead of control flow logic, uh, if then 
else type of statements, DNA consists of state of art neural networks with many layers. Sometimes these are goes to uh, millions to billions uh, parameters in these type of large scale networks. And uh, so the idea is to train the weights of these networks uh, with various nonlinear activation functions. I would say convolutional neural networks are the most popular deep neural network types, uh, which has been used by the uh, self-driving car. And uh, since when you have a, a quite a lot of driving data sets, you can use back propagation type algorithms to uh, train these uh, neural networks. Um, so of course the, the, the networks having, uh, I have mentioned millions to billions parameters. So these parameters has to be uh, tuned uh, to this back propagation uh, algorithm. Uh, I have mentioned here forward and backward training uh, iterations would be done to tune up uh, these neural networks. Uh, so these neural networks consist of high, high, highly parallel structures and often uh, GPUs being used to uh, do these uh, uh, training uh, in, 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 the, in, in various industries. So, so that is one reason that we need higher computational speed and power especially when you're talking about GPUs in, in this type of uh, research projects. Um, so then uh, we we have mentioned that the safety is an important part when you're talking about uh, autonomous navigation. We believe that just the network, uh, deep neural network itself may not be robust and safety critical enough systems to 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 encounter to to improve the safety of these uh, systems. Um, since un unexpected and undesirable ship motions and navigation conditions ex encountered by these uh, ship navigators or, or these vessels, we believe we need additional uh, safety systems to be on board. Um, so the DNN deep neural networks, we will be uh, trained under um, under I would say calm water situations at least in the beginning but when it's come to a, a rough weather conditions we believe or, or undesirable conditions we believe there can be additional challenges yet to be addressed so these challenges can vary uh, to overcome uh, 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 such type of situations what we're proposing is having a additional decision support layer on top of these deep neural networks to overcome such type of situations. So this is where we kind of put additional informations where these uh, deep neural networks can uh, uh, make decisions based on these additional uh, networks. You have to know uh, when you talk about training or, or deep neural networks from human drivers, uh, knowledge and experience, this can be like a more, more general model but these decision support layers can stay at uh, above this general layer to support the human navigator uh, behavior. Um, so we have understand this situation awareness and collision avoidance as one of the important uh, key decision support layer that should be in these uh, autonomous vessels, especially when it's running under uh, this type of a deep neural networks. And I would come into the next slide where we kind of put all these issues into a more structured format uh, to explain how this problem uh, can be uh, solved. So if you have adequate safety buffer, of course, the collision and uh, near collision uh, situations can be avoided. And if you can avoid it from somewhat a far distance, uh, we can always avoid possible near miss situation. So, um, so, so, so to overcome all these challenges, what I have described, uh, we have something called ship intelligence framework, which we have created in a conceptual level by the by our research program. Uh, of course, there's some of these lessons we learned from the self-driving cars are bringing back into the maritime industry under this uh, framework. So, this is that framework. Um, I would say the, the four key 
main pillars which I have discussed previously also in this framework. So the human helmsman is there, AI or the digital helmsman is in this layer. So this is the deep neural network layer. And then the regulations coming under this digital support layer and, 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 and the technology is, is a part of this uh, blue region which is representing the vessel and ship system. So let me go through a couple of important areas. Uh, as I have mentioned, this blue region, uh, light blue region represents this vessel and ship system. Um, if I start with the propeller and thruster control systems and the rudder control systems, these are uh, influenced by this uh, engine or the batteries or the electric motors being on board in these vessels and then the rudder is somewhat represent the steering system of the vessel. So, uh, so the propeller or thrusters having pitch and speed control activities based on these uh, control systems or the control uh, the, the actions given by the human navigator. So the navigation actions will be implemented in this automation system. And then the rudder angle and the rate will also be part of this automation system. So when you execute this propeller and rudder actions, um, then uh, that will influence on the ship speed control systems and then ship heading and course control. And uh, combination of that, we can say this is the vessel behavior. Then vessel itself will have this ship keeping and maneuvering behavior that will also uh, play an important uh, role. And then um, this vessel behavior will be uh, observed by uh, the, the various sensors on board the vessel. So here we are mentioning this uh, on board uh, IOTs. You have GNSS, uh, Inertial Measurement Center, LiDAR, digital camera, weather transmitters and so on. And then uh, as a navigation system, you generally have a radar or, or, or upper radar and active system uh, conning and, and so on with uh, various automation information. So the whole unit we think as integrated bit system. So in general, what happened? Uh, human observers will get information from this integrated bridge and then uh, through this arrow and then it decide what activities to be done uh, or, or as navigation actions. So this cycle somewhat uh, goes as, as, a, as a, a conventional ship navigation approach. But then uh, we plan to introduce two important uh, components into this. One is called this uh, advanced ship predictor. What is does is it predict vessel motions within a, a given time frame. And then there's another unit uh, which is called this digital ship route, uh, which is kind of developing uh, infrastructure or the road, road network in the ocean. Therefore, the uh, future vessels can follow up such type of road network. Um, so this advanced ship predictor is represented by actual uh, ship routes and motions, and then the required uh, ship routes and motions will be represented by this uh, digital uh, ship routes. And if the human navigator has that information, what will happen? He can make a better decisions, and then uh, this cycle will continue. So when, when human navigator use that information, uh, we call uh, this is the training phase. So human navigator take actions, it, these actions go through the vessel, and then this uh, information from advanced ship predictor and the digital ship route being observed by the human, and then it takes again the required actions. So when, while it's running this cycle, what we do, under this project would be uh, there's a deep uh, learning or deep neural network on top of that framework, uh, these blocks. Uh, under this framework, what we do, we collect human navigators action and then this vessel behavior as navigation information. So when you have both of all this information, we use these deep neural networks to train the human uh, navigation behavior. So that is the training phase of uh, uh, this project uh, to develop this digital helmsman. 
but when you come to the execution process, this is where we believe the autonomous vessels will navigate itself with this deep neural, deep neural network technology. So when it comes to the ex execution phase, this human helmsman will be removed. The vessel will execute itself through the deep neural networks and uh, take uh, proper navigation actions, execute through the vessel, and then they collect the, the data information and then this cycle will continue. So um, let me uh, come back again. Um, so then we believe um, only this uh, deep neural network or the digital helpsman itself will not be enough for this process. So there are uh, there should be some decision support layers should on top of that deep neural networks to make this ship navigation uh, more safer and uh, reliable. So there can be various decision support blocks in, in these vessels. For example, voyage planning and route segmentation, because each route can have like a, uh, 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 even though uh, autonomous route can have some sectors which has been controlled as remote controlled uh, mode. Um, so that can be a requirement when you have some safety critical issues in, 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 in that route or let's say some additional weather challenges. And then uh, systems like a pilotage and then simultaneous localization and mapping, weather routing and uh, safe ship handling, uh, ship stability calculations, and then a condition monitoring type of applications can be sit on top of this uh, digital helms. And uh, situational awareness and collision avoidance, this is one of the uh, key important uh, decision support layers should be there. And I would talk a little bit on, on this, mo this model itself uh, in, in, in the future slides. So uh, to support this decision support layer, you need quite a lot of information resources. And then uh, there will be supporting services and authorities going to sit on top of that uh, uh, information resources. Uh, so this is where you can even implement uh, various information as well as various regulations which relates to this uh, ship navigation. For example, here I'm talking about energy efficiency and emission control rules and regulations. Um, and this can be comes from this uh, various maritime authorities. So like that you have, you can have different uh, conditions that should satisfy even the digital navigator in, in, in an ocean environment. Furthermore, uh, I think I have forgot to mention this. There are external environmental conditions also influencing this vessel behavior. Uh, our objective is to collect as much as uh, uh, human navigation data sets under various uh, environmental conditions. So that could make this uh, digital navigator more, more reliable and more robust. So I have mentioned that advanced predictor and the digital routes uh, in, in, in the previous presentation, just give you uh, one, one key uh, overview of what we uh, think as those technologies should be. The, this is kind of view from the bridge, we call that information visualization platform. And then uh, we have something called the, the, the one I called previously digital route is represented by uh, these uh, yellow lines. So that is where, uh, this is where the vessel is guided to navigate. And then advanced ship predictor is showing uh, with this blue arrow. So it shows that within a uh, given time frame, this vessel should be within uh, some other direction. So that way the uh, navigator has enough informations to to decide what sort of a control actions on the radar and propulsion system should be uh, taken. Uh, and then um, target detection and tracking. I think this technology is somewhat advanced in the automotive industry. This is also based on deep neural networks. It has a, a superior capabilities to detect object and, and kind of track those objects. So that knowledge will also be bringing it into this uh, project. Uh, so when you have target, target detection and tracking, I think collision risk assessment is important uh, to detect uh, if there is a collision or a close encounter situations uh, of this vessel. So then, then the, the digital helmsman 
can take uh, precautions on, on such type of situations. But I will talk this uh, collision avoidance a little bit uh, detailed in, in, in another slide. Um, so this is our uh, sensor systems in this on board the vessel. This is supported by uh, GNSS systems with, with inertial navigation system. Um, as you can see, uh, so this is this this uh, outlier is the vessel. Uh, this this dry, drawing uh, this this line represent kind of vessel uh, outline. Um, and then uh, you have this uh, this vessel has two GPS antennas to measure uh, two vessel positions in the center line. And then INS uh, system is on on the on near the. Uh, near the center of this vessel. So pretty much uh, six degree uh, of uh, linear and rotational motions will be measured by the systems accurately. And uh, we have additional uh, GPS systems in, in the land, which is connected with these two radio modems. Uh, this system will make uh, the, the, the land system is there or the onshore system is there to increase the accuracy of this GPS position. So in general, we can get three centimeter accuracy from this uh, system. And then these connected with compact VOs, which are uh, called, um, uh, which are kind of microprocessors. And, uh, and then uh, there are additional sensors on board the vessel. This microprocessor is connected into a network switch and that has some type of a touch panel being in, con connected and then there are marine computers being uh, developed and then this network switch is connected into an ethernet uh, port where it can communicate information into an onshore system. And there is a weather station also in these vessels to uh, measure the weather conditions in, in, in that uh, ship route and that's also connected with this type of uh, compact view. Uh, so if I'm coming back to the next subsystem, which is the automatic autom automation system, um, we have a marine engine and a steering control system on board the vessel, and this is connected with something called external helm. Uh, external helm facilitate to control the um, engine itself, and it is connected by uh, two compact rios, which that are connected into this uh, network switch. So from a, a onshore system, you can send control signals into this engine and steering control system. So you can see these systems being developed by our program is the main reason that these vessels has to be controlled at some point under remote control situation and then finally in, in autonomy, autonomous uh, navigation situation. So other than that, there are additional sensors on board this vessel, uh, 3D LiDAR unit is there. There are several digital cameras, radar and echo sounder unit also being installed in this vessel. Often, of, of course, there's a workstation there to uh, process this information. And then there are several maritime monitors on board uh, to visualize this information and kind of troubleshooting shooting some of these uh, systems. So um, we are establishing a remote operation center. Um, so the objective is to support these vessels. This vessel when we have various uh, sea trials and, and uh, these centers will monitor this, its behavior, its motions, collect the data and then, uh, uh, I mean, it, it pretty much do the supporting work for this vessel. But we expect in the future the operational conditions and, and the mission requirement will get complex due to additional requirements. So these centers will be useful in that sense. Of course, we will have a, a remote control facilities from this center to, to navigate or control this vessel uh, even when it's uh, uh, developed towards uh, autonomous vessels. So when we are collecting uh, the ship navigator's uh, behavior, uh, or, or real world ship navigation data sets, I think uh, these uh, operation centers will play a really uh, key role. Um, so now I'm going to talk about a little bit on the situation awareness and, and the collision avoidance part. Um, what we have done in our program, um, 
I have mentioned this advanced ship predictor that will play an important role in this research program. Uh, this predictor has been developed under two scales. One is in the local scale and one is in a, in a global scale. In the global scale, uh, Brian is one of our PhD students, has done quite a good uh, work on that. And you can see he has several publications on this uh, area. He used machine learnings to uh, you predict uh, using AIS data to predict ship behavior within a longer time period. Uh, this case you can see into 30 minutes. So, so this is somewhat useful work into our autonomous ship program. And then uh, we also done some work on this local scale ship prediction. This is more like a 30 second motions. Uh, <clears throat> this work has also been published and there will be a new PhD student going to work on this topic further. So what we have done was here, you can see a, a, a vessel is maneuvering from uh, this point to that point. Uh, so the black uh, line represents the vessel actual position, and then dotted line represents the actual ship maneuvering motion. And then light blue line represents the predicted uh, vessel position and its orientation. As you can see, uh, the ship maneuvering can be a really complex problem but we have developed several algorithms to predict that motion within a smaller time frame. Uh, so, so I think we have achieved somewhat a really good results. When you see this uh, plot, uh, you can observe that. So these two uh, component, when you combine, we call this advanced ship predictor. So this, is, this will play an important role when you're talking about the collision avoidance in, in ship navigation in the future, especially related to this autonomous shipping. So in the top figure, I'm, I'm showing somewhat a complex navigation system. You can see these two vessels are, are heading into two different directions, but due to these different course speed vectors, it can have a collision point somewhere here. But this is something you it's difficult for you to observe right away with compared to the heading vector of these vessels. So that will make this ship, ship, uh, uh, ship encounter situation somewhat complex. Um, I would say this, uh, collision avoidance is a simpler problem because if you know uh, where your vessel is going to have, uh, when your vessel is going to have collision point, if one vessel take a slight change of course or speed, that collision point can be avoided, then the, the whole collision encounter situation can be avoided. But the challenge is not the collision avoidance, the challenge comes from the uh, collision risk estimation. When you have really complex maneuvers, where are these collisions? Is there a collision going to happen due to these maneuvers? And where that can happen and, and its timing can be something difficult to estimate. So, so in general, we have to solve this collision risk estimation problem under complex navigational situation for the ship industry, rather than be developing advanced algorithms to uh, avoid uh, uh, collision. Uh, which is, which is, I, I would believe, which is not that uh, uh, intelligent approach. So, um, in we have a uh, this is UIT bridge simulator. Um, at some point, when you develop these algorithms, uh, what we want to do is uh, test this algorithm. Often, uh, collision avoidance algorithms, it's difficult to test it in a real environment. Um, so, so to avoid uh, such type of uh, uh, challenges, what you can do, you can test these algorithms in a simulated environment. So we have this bridge simulator with various uh, stations where you can have different vessels. In this case, we named vessel A, B, C, and D. D is considered as a, a, a autonomous vessel. We have worked on, on, on some software development on these uh, collision avoidance actions. For example, uh, at some point, uh, the, the, there's something called this parallel decision making modules. This will make, make decisions based on various encounter situations uh, for, for the navigators to take actions. Then these actions will be converted into, uh, uh, converted into uh, vessel uh, actions itself by this sequential action formulation module. And then when you combine these two, we call this is the autonomous decision action execution module. module. Uh, and then, so this module itself can be a, a, a 
autonomous vessel and uh, if you if we implement that in another station now you have like three vessels navigated by humans and one vessel coming as autonomous uh, navigation conditions so uh, vessel position heading course and whether information can be extracted from this bridge simulator and then uh, we can use this advanced ship predictor to uh, predict uh, is there a possibility of uh, having uh, collision risk so then we have something called collision risk assessment unit uh, this is where uh, this advanced predictor information will be used to uh, estimate uh, possible collision situations and then that information can be feed back into this uh, bridge system uh, or, 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 the, or, or various stations uh, navigating in, in this complete grid system. So this information, uh, collision risk information can be shared between human navigators as well as this collision autonomous vessel itself. And as you know, call rate rules and regulations dominate what sort of a uh, actions or decisions should be taken in, in the close encounter situations of, of, of vessels. So this is where we discuss how we implement this uh, collision avoidance type of maneuvers uh, into autonomous vessels and the lessons learned from that we will bring into an actual uh, ship navigation situation. Uh, and at, at some point I, I have mentioned that we should uh, study how the uh, AI will interact with the rules and regulations. Um, so this is somewhat a blocked framework we are presenting that can be uh, used to learn this type of uh, uh, behavior from, the, from AI. So I have mentioned this decision support is an important part. This is where when you have a ship encounter situation, this is where you estimate the collision risk and then uh, use it to make collision avoidance decisions based on the call regs. And uh, this situation you can have both human and digital helmsman. Um, so the human collision avoidance actions can be observed and then at the same time uh, system collision actions can be observed in that type of a bridge environment. So these, these two blocks we consider as a cloned human behavior. And finally, the regulatory compliance uh, can be uh, assessed with respect to these uh, uh, various actions taken by the humans as well as systems. Um, so we believe we need a good consistency between human and the system uh, decisions when it's come to a, a ship encounter situations. Uh, since these uh, the digital helmsman or the AI being trained by the human navigators. Um, at the same time, we expect to uh, uh, support with this collision risk uh, estimations and this collision avoidance decision should be taken by uh, humans well as uh, systems. Uh, in, a, in a more consistent way, so they kind of receive the same information. So that way we would expect them to take similar actions. So when we have vessels navigating by humans and autonomous modes, so we can see some consistency in the decisions they are making. And that way we believe this will uh, have some level of regulatory compliance. Uh, of course, these uh, collision avoidance actions somewhat simpler. You can say the speed change and the course change that are the only things can be taken by uh, these uh, vessels. Um, and then uh, actually this, this, this uh, collision avoidance actions can get a little bit more complicated. I have mentioned that the, the situation awareness module which will be implemented in our project, which has this advanced ship predictor. Uh, and then you have this collision risk estimation assessment unit along with collision avoidance actions. And when you, uh, when you, when you, when vessel is navigating, its maneuvering behavior uh, will be observed by the sensor that information feed back into the advanced predictor and the predictor will say, tell uh, is there a collision in the future and within what type of a space and time constraints that will happen. So this maneuvering behavior, as I have mentioned, will be influenced by some of the under actuation 
under actuation conditions. Um, so since due to this type of uh, maneuvering restrictions or maneuvering difficulties, we believe at some point there can be some regulatory failures and that end up in uh, 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 ship collisions or near, near miss situations. I mean, I'm talking in this uh, bridge uh, simulator environment. So what we're supposed to do if we required, we have to introduce various rules and regulation modifications. So then uh, call regs and uh, local navigation rules and regulations should be modified as required. So then that can support these remote controlled and manned vessels as well as these autonomous vessels. So that will eventually interact with uh, enhanced uh, situation awareness. But um, if I say a little bit about the actions taken by these vessels, uh, so the propulsion and radar control systems are the systems uh, should be used or can be used. Um, in, in generally, uh, alteration of the curve course is the most prefer prefer preferred collision avoidance actions um, by the navigators because you may not be able to change speed continuously, especially in, in large scale uh, vessels. And then losing ship speed can also influence the maneuverability of these vessels, so it will lose its maneuverability if you are moving in a, a slow speed conditions. I think this point never been not not been uh, understood by uh, many uh, uh, algorithm developers. So so they think like a slowing down a vessel can avoid a collision situation. The sad part is you might lose maneuverability in these vessels and eventually you won't end up in a collision situations due to the, the loss of ship maneuverability. Um, so I have mentioned that regulatory compliance from the systems as well as uh, humans should be uh, uh, studied. Uh, any inconsistency between that uh, should be eliminated, maybe by introducing additional precautions on the additional support layers, or there is a need for a possible uh, uh, modification of these uh, navigation rules and regulations. Um, so we expect uh, all these outcomes will include the digital helmsman behavior and uh, of course that will come as when we identify the possible uh, regulatory modification under this type of uh, evaluation conditions. I would say, uh, I mean we studied uh, quite a lot of uh, ish situations where this possible regulatory failure can happen. I would uh, give you a somewhat a simpler example in this figure. Um, when we were simulating uh, various ship encounter situations, we have noted that when a, a own vessel is encountering a target vessel from a head-on situation, but slightly into port, uh, this vessel own vessel had a difficulty to identify whether it's as a, a crossing situation or a head-on situation. Um, and then it associated with uh, uh, additional challenges. For example, if the target vessel is heading your way, you have two uh, decisions to be taken with this, uh, uh, to be taken with respect to this type of encounter situation. Of course, this case we assume the own vessel is going in a straight path uh, and then a target vessel uh, should expect to turn into a, a starboard side. But as you let's assume it's it's that that has not happened. So the target vessel is still, still heading towards the uh, close encounter or, or this intersection point of these trajectories. I mean, why we introduce this case is we want to look into the worst case scenario for these type of uh, ship encounter situation. So, so there is the behavior of the target vessel. What is the own vessel can do? It can turn either into starboard or port. But then if it's going to uh, turn into a starboard, uh, that starboard trajectory going to intersect with this target vessel trajectory at some point. So it can be a, a dangerous move. And then uh, let's say if it's turned into a port side, um, then what will happen if some point this target vessel decided to turn into starboard? that trajectory will go into intersect with this trajectory. 
So, <coughs> so when you studying this situation in in a simulated mode, this this situation came as one of a critical uh, ship encounter situation where some of these uh, call rec rules and regulations can be challenged. Um, so we believe this type of situation can be existing in 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 in, in the general framework. Where when the system start making decisions, it, it has some level of logic to follow up. Such type of logics can fail in, 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 in some situations. So I think we kind of identify uh, three of these situations. One was uh, when a vessel coming in, in a head on situation, but slightly into port, the vessel had identification issues to decide whether it's a head on or, or, or crossing situation. And if, if, if the vessel uh, uh, navigation trajectory uh, intercept the different uh, uh, sectors of these uh, decision space, where each decision space may have different types of call reg rules and regulations, uh, if there is a, in a way these type of two rules and regulations are going to intersect, uh, those, ish, those uh, actions can be cancelled out and then it might end up in a, in, a, in a collision situation or a near near uh, close encounter situation. Uh, you have to remember we are considering the um, worst case scenarios in, in this situation. And then if you have multiple vessels are encountering, then you have a kind of challenge to decide which one should give you the uh, priority uh, in, in ship navigation. So I would think uh, there are uh, quite many areas we should study uh, in, in, the, in ship collision avoidance in relation to this autonomous shipping. And then if we require, we should introduce various modifications into the regulations. Um, so this is this uh, UIT vessel. This, was, uh, this is when it was in the uh, drawing phase. And then this is in, in actually when you build this vessel, uh, this is that picture. Uh, so currently we are working on, on facilitating these vessels with various sensors. Hopefully we can st start soon uh, conducting sea trials with this vessel. Um, so I have mentioned these are the uh, four key pillars of the UIT autonomous ship program. Um, in the same time, uh, there is an important component uh, which you should uh, study in relations to this digital helmsman. Um, so this process, what we are doing, uh, so this is, we call this cognitive ability of human and digital helmsman. Uh, the cognitive ability of humans, we already know, we have quite a lot of information, but still uh, the, the cognitive ability of the AI or the digital helmsman yet to be investigated. So the human uh, training process we can consider as a teaching, then we will know the networks are learning, and then at some point we have to do the evaluation whether to understand whether the, the information we have given to the AI has been extracted by the AI and it will make the proper decisions on one ship navigation. So I would think this will come out a bigger picture, uh, but uh, still uh, quite a lot of activities or research work yet to be done in this. So finally, uh, we are coming into the conclusion. Uh, this is our team in our autonomous vessel, Petra Vida, and then uh, myself, Goodman, Bjorn, uh, and Ricardo. Uh, so this was kind of initial team which was supported in this program, but our team is growing now uh, because the activities related to this vessel is somewhat expanding. And then uh, if you're interested, we have a website. Uh, you can uh, you can look into that and then we have a LinkedIn group uh, and then we have a YouTube channel and then we have a research kit uh, website also where you can uh, collect uh, uh, quite a lot of information on, on this program. And then finally, thank you. Um, so since this recorded webinar, uh, I wouldn't expect any questions at this point. Anyway, thanks for uh, watching uh, our uh, video and your interest in our research program. Okay, thanks.